So, hello again and um, welcome. Uh, so, let's talk about philosophy in this Thomas Mann's novel, so full of ideas. As I have already said, Andrian Leverkuhn is a collective image. A collective image that reveals the feature of several historical figures at once. Um, in the history of Leverkuhn's life, many facts of Friedrich Nietzsche's bi biography are indeed visible, uh, such as his infection with syphilis, man has an episode in a brothel, uh, meeting Esmeralda um, and its connotation uh, to Nietzsche's life, uh, so matchmaking to a girl through his friend, uh, several mental illness in the last 10 years of his life. Uh, in addition, the novel discusses the, in detail many of uh, Nietzsche's philosophical and aesthetical ideas, primarily his concept um, of Dionysian and Apollinian. Um, Nietzsche is an intelligent nutrient medium. Uh, of the novel, its cultural and philosophical basis or foundations, uh, maybe. So, Mann about Nietzsche uh, in, uh, in the work Nietzsche in the light of our experience. Um, <clears throat> he says that deliberately distort existing in the real world uh, the balance of power between instinct and intellect, portraying the case in such a way that is, it is already um, a terrible time of domination of the intellect and it is necessary before it is too late to save the instincts from it. In addition, uh, the attitude to morality um, treats life and morality as two opposites and thus distorts their true relationship uh, because of Nietzsche's ideas. So, meanwhile, morality and life is... Uh, morality and life are one. They are unity. Ethics is the mainstay of life for man. In this way, Thomas Mann identified the central idea of Nietzsche's philosophy, which he defined in his novel uh, Faustus as the connection between aesthetism and barbarism. This idea is contained in the lectures of Wendell Kretschmer, a music teacher of uh, Adrian. Um, for Nietzsche, the meaning of culture <clears throat> is the education of the beast contains in human nature and ideals are just tools of culture. So uh, the man was grinting and became hopelessly moderate. Uh, the memory of duty through suffering is in the genealogy of moral of morality, genealogy of morality. However, a person who has a will um, has power over himself and forms his memory. A person needs activity, uh, he needs or she needs uh, to be active in life. But conscious is the invention of resentment uh, people. For Nietzsche, punishment cools and hardens, uh, and it's such a good thing uh, in this way. So, and guilty conscience is a suffering from oneself, a repressed instinct for freedom. So, uh, the will to power is an unsaturated instinct. The will wants to rule over the whole life. Serenus so, um, Blom. Uh, notices that he is not inclined to speak of a lack of naivety, for naivety is ultimately uh, the basis of being um, as such, uh, of any being, even the most conscious and complex. 
the almost irremediable conflict between self-control and the creative impulse of natural genius between chastity and passion. This is the naivety that feeds the kind of artist. Uh, counteracting the impulse in the form of mockery, parody, um, of course, consists uh, in music of Adrian and um, to tell the truth in, in Adrian himself. So, again, the conflict between the Dionysian and Apollinian power and the mockery shows this conflict. It must dissolve, but what it is, what it is, the idea. Krishmar gives an unexpected answer. <clears throat> this should dissolve in archaic or barbaric. Thus, uh, this new stage will be a return to the old. Uh, the oldest mythological form, pre-Christian cults. It is no coincidence that Krishmar's lectures are called the spontaneous in music, music and spontaneity, ATC. Uh, music, says Kretschmer, should become a primitive spell, the resurrection uh, of the first principles, the similarity of the cosmos. Uh, and here we can see the rejection of moral concepts and norms and um, some return to ideas of pre Socratics and for example, Parmenid. Kierkegaard, Søren Kierkegaard, also appears directly in the text in chapter 25. For meeting a stranger or devil, Lever Kuhn reads uh, Kierkegaard's Other Or, where he, there is a chapter on Mozart's uh, Don Juan or Don Giovanni. Opera of Mozart, yes. Kierkegaard writes in this chapter that Faust and Don, Juan, Don Giovanni are the titans and giants of the Middle Ages, uh, who are as proud of their beginnings uh, as the heroes of antiquity, except that they stand in isolation and didn't try to gather an alliance of like-minded people uh, for a joint uh, a sword on the heavens. Because here all the power is concentrated in the individual. Don Juan, then, is an expression of the demonic, which is defined as sensuous. Faust is an expression of a demonic state defined as a spiritual state. Uh, that is excluded by the Christian spirit, so it's very, very pride, a uh, proud spirit, very arrogant. Mm -hmm. These ideas stand in essential relation to each other and have much in common with each other. Therefore, it was quite possible to expect their embodiment in folk legends. On the contrary, Dungeon is a seducer to the core, uh, to the marrow. Uh, his life, his love, sorry, his love is not spiritual but sensual. And sensual love, by its very definition, is not true but absolutely treacherous. It loves no, not one but all, and this means it seduces all. It exists only for a single moment, but this moment is, by its very definition, the sum of individual moments, and uh, this is where we get the seducer. Natural philosophy and the desire to grow artificial flowers, it's a specific moment, uh, and uh, this desire and this philosophy are already characteristic of Leverkuhn's father. Uh, the devil remembers him focus of the disease that Adrian received from the Etera Esmeralda allows him to see the devil and as the devil, the devil himself says, wait, 
What is that swarming and progressing will allow you to throw a worse thing, overcome even less obstacles, rise above the stiffness and dumbness. Osmotic flowers will spring up. Those who are friends with that tempter are not are not at peace with human feelings. Illness is an intoxication that grants liberation. Let's remember Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan uh, Leverkuhn opens book with color illustration that depict exotic moths and marine animals. The picture shows glass-winged butterflies. Their wings, completely devoid of scales, seem to be a delicate glaze, uh, slightly covered with a network of dark veins. This butterfly, in its transparent nakedness, curls under the twilight crowns of trees, is called Etera Esmeralda. Etera Esmeralda is the Latin name for a large tropical butterfly, literally translated as an emerald green airlot. Uh, for hours, Jonathan Ney looked at the Patterns on the window through a magnifying glass, wondering the following question Did this phantasmagoria proceed or repeat vegetable forms? Should we consider the true flowers of the meadows as a prototype only because they have an organic, deep existence, while the frosty flowers are only a mirage? This is not a biological question but a philosophical and theological one. A doubt about the superiority of the natural world will also be reflected in the novel many times. In the dialogue Leverkuhn with mm, a fellow students, Yath despise, uh, despises nature as such, by the way, uh, according to Adrian, and the music itself of Adrian frosty artificial patterns. Uh, devil says, as you remember, you're my friend, deference to the objective, to the so-called, to tell the truth, uh, and not caring for the subjective, for pure experience. This is indeed a bourgeois tendency that um, must be overcome. In the same way, he talks about the multiplying power of untruth, a disease in the drunkenness, which immediately takes obstacles sweeter than the plodding path of health.